Okay, number two, the declaration of his heavenly presence. The declaration, the declaration of his heavenly presence. And then number three, the demonstration of his healing power. It is coming. I said it's coming. The demonstration of his healing power. What's number one? I said what's number one? The discovery of his healing provision. We're looking at Genesis. In the Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. What did in there from verse 15? You will see here what happens. When God has made the provision, and that provision was hidden from this person in me. And then, all of a sudden, the Lord's page made her to discover that hidden provision. I want joy, what relief, what release when that provision was revealed in Genesis chapter 21, verse 15. And the water was pitch in the bottle, and she cast the child on the one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him. A good way, a good way up. As it were a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. There we find a woman, a name, Hagar. She had a child, Ishmael, and Abraham had given bread and a bottle of water, but the water was finished, and she didn't know how she'll be able to get water to quench the thirst and the need of the child. And the child began to cry, and the child was in terrible need. And she couldn't find, she couldn't see any provision. The provision was hidden. Baby, today your child has a problem. And you have been looking for solution. And it appears you are in a strange land. And you don't have the way with her. How you can solve the problem. The Lord is going to reveal to you where the solution is. And here... The woman lifted up her voice as she cried, and she wept in verse 17, and God heard the voice of the lad, and God had not just the voice of the mother, not just the weeping and the crying and the sorrow of the mother, even that little child, and God heard the voice of the lad. You and your child, whatever the needs are this morning, I want to declare to you, the Lord has had your cry. He knows where you feel the pain. He knows where you feel the problem. He knows where you feel the challenge. And the Lord himself, by his mighty power and revelation, is going to reveal to you what the revelation is. And you are going to have the solution in your life in Jesus' name. Then we are told in verse 17, going at the voice of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord, the angel of God, called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not. This morning the Lord is telling you, Fear not. I said, The Lord is telling you, Fear not. Will this problem be solved? Fear not. Will this sickness be healed? Fear not. Will this oppression be taken away? Fear not. Will this situation ever change? Fear not. This morning you will not fear. I said this morning you will not fear. It says fear not for God has heard the voice of the Lord. 
where he is, arise. Lift up the lash. Hold him in thine hand. For I will make him a great nation. God will get something great out of you. Something wonderful out of you. The present situation will turn around. The present situation will change. And according to the promise of God, when he says, I will, then he will. And nothing will turn him around in Jesus' name. Now, verse 19 is where we're going. Verse 19 is where we're going. And God did what? Tell me out loud. Opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She got open her eyes. The well of water was near her all the time. The provision was nearby all the time. The provision had been made by the Almighty God in that same place where he was. But he is, her eyes were not open. And you know sometimes, this is the reason why some people run away from this wonderful church. They have a problem. And they have cried, they have wept, they are sorrowful, and they have not seen the problem. And then they say, the power is not there, the power is there, the healing is there, the deliverance is there, the dominion is there, the provision is there. Only what you need is that your eyes will be opened. I said your eyes will be opened. And because they think, they think. That the power is not there. They see the healing is not there. Then they throw it away their child. Or they throw it away their responsibility. Or they throw it away some gifts the Lord had given them. And they go about in tears searching for the solution. When the solution is right there. God opens her eyes. Your eyes are open already. And then she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water. The empty bottle was filled. The empty bottle of your life will be filled this morning. And gave the large drink. And gave the large drink. I'm coming to judges. All you need is that your eyes will be open. And you'll see the power of God is so very near. The healing of God is so very near. The deliverance of God is so very near. Judges chapter 15. In Judges chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 17. But talking about the discovery of God's healing provision. Judges. Chapter 15, verse 17. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the trouble out of his hand and called that place Ramas Lehi. That's something. He had had a great, great victory. After that great victory, what the Lord used in giving that victory was the jawbone of an ass. And he threw away the jawbone of the ass. And then in verse 18, And he was sore at thirst, and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. And now shall I die for thirst, and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. You see the situation here, powerful something, mighty something, conquering something, they conquer, something they conquer. He became thirsty. Again, there was no water for him to drink, and the situation became so terrible and so pathetic that he then began to say, I'm going to die of thirst. I'm going to die of the want, of the need. I'm going to die of what I need and I cannot find. 
and they were told in verse 19 of God claimed an hollow place that was in the jaw and there came water there out. You see what they are what they have thrown away. The jaw full of the eyes they felt this is useless. This I don't have any need of this. I'm used to, to kill and to destroy the enemies of righteousness and the enemies of the purpose and the plan of God. And then he threw it away and felt there is nothing in it anymore until God opened that jawbone of an ass. And then water gushed out of it from the unexpected place. The miracle came. From the expected place, the provision came from the unexpected place. What he was looking for and was sensitive on that thing came from this unexpected place that you retreat this morning. Your miracle has come. All you need to do is just open your eyes and see what the Lord has provided already. And in that verse 19, it says, And, and then he went when he had drunk the water. His spirit came again, and he revived, wherefore he called the name thereof and Hakore, which is in Lehi until this day. All I'm praying for and all you are praying for is that God will open your eyes and you will see that your miracle, your blessing, the provision is closer to you than you ever thought. And this morning is the morning of a breakthrough in your life. The morning of healing in your life. Because God is promising you that before the end of the prayer, He will go before you and when you rise up to pray and you open your mouth, He will fill you with miracle and blessing. Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. I'm reading from verse 2. Isaiah 45, verse 2. I will go before thee. Give me a good amen. And make the crooked places strange. What else do I need? What else do you need? What else are you looking for? The Lord says, in your journey through life, you're looking for job, the Lord will go before you. You're looking for a good wife, the Lord will go before you. You're looking for a good husband, the Lord will go before you. You're looking for children, the Lord will go before you. You're looking for provision, the Lord says, it will go before you. And make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass. Any gauge that is standing between you and your blessing, the Lord said, don't worry about those gates, they will break them down. They will demolish them. And cut in sunder the bars of iron. Verse 3, I will give you the treasures of darkness. That is, the treasures that are hidden away by the dark. Because, you know, when there is darkness, we don't see the treasures, we don't see the provision. But the Lord is saying, in the time when things are dark, when it's very black and very dim in the night, and then you say, I'm searching, I'm looking, I cannot find, the Lord says, I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Add that to your Bible because this coming year is going to be a different year. I said this coming year is going to be a different year. Do you know why the world is talking about this depression and recession and economic downturn? Oh, because they cannot see the provision of the Lord. And it is when God begins to open the eyes of those who are in charge and he says but look at this hidden treasure but look at this hidden provision and look at everything i provided whether their eyes are opened or not even before their eyes get opened your own eyes will be opened the hidden riches in secret places the lord will reveal to you don't say you are poor again when the, when the riches are declared and provided for you now you are rich in the Lord let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich 
Let the sad people say, I am happy. You are happy in the Lord. The Lord has provided all your needs and all your problems are solved in Jesus' name. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, will which call thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. And the Lord will reveal everything unto you in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And you wonder why are Christians sometimes in need and they need this fighting in their lives and yet they pray and pray and pray and it appears it is still like that is it because God has forgotten them God will never forgive forget you I said God will never forget you he remembers you but what has happened Oh, what has happened is, I has not seen. The thing is hidden. And because it is hidden, you cannot see. And then it says, ears have not heard. You have not seen it, you have not heard of it. Neither has entered into the heart of man. And because it has not entered into your heart, that's why you say, God, where are you? God, what are you looking at? I need this, I need this. This and I need that. But look at verse 10. But God has revealed them. This morning, God has revealed them. All the provision we need, all the power you need, all the oppression of the mighty walking spirit of God that you need in your life. He says, But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Will you have them? I said, will you have them? Now when you have them, you are going to rejoice in the provision of the Lord. That was given before, but now you can find. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. Call unto me. And what did he say? And I will answer. He didn't say, I may answer. If I'm in a good mood, if I'm happy, I may answer you. He said, there's no doubt in your heart. Because God has declared it. And he said, call unto me. And I will answer thee. And show thee. That was show, that was show. I show thee, they were hidden before. You have not found them. But you hear the testimonies of other people. God did this for me. You say, that is great. You say, that is mighty. How is it? I have never seen anything like that before. But the Lord is saying now, every good testimony you have heard from other people, the Lord says, I will show thee great and mighty things. In this retreat, God will show it to you. He will reveal it to you. When he says, I will show thee, that means I will open your eyes to see. I will open your mind to understand. I will open your heart and you will see. Very clearly and very definitely what the Lord has provided for you. Call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Which thou knowest not. You didn't know it before this day. This morning you will see. You will have. You will possess. You will know it. I'm coming back to Exodus chapter 15. Point number two. The declaration of his heavenly presence. 
the declaration of his heavenly precept the Lord has promised us already and he said if we call unto him he will reveal he will show what if we didn't know before great and mighty things that we knew not but now he's going to give us the declaration of his heavenly precept look at this in, verse, in chapter 15 of exodus chapter 15 Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 and said if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God I will do that which is right in the sight I will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that healeth thee I'm sure you've read that verse before we even read it earlier today in the introduction to the message I'm pointing something to you here I'm pointing number one if thou if thou verse 26 and said if thou, that means if you, that's the human part, and then in that same, in that same verse, it says, I will, the human part, if thou, the divine part, the part of God, I will. I want you to I want you to look at the Bible now and look at the Bible with those two parts, with those two leaves of the door, with those two ends of the rope. If thou on one hand, I will on the other hand. That's what we're going to look for now. Remember, if thou, then I will. If thou then I will. We're looking at Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23, verse 22. Be looking for those words, if thou I will. If thou I will. Verse 22. But, tell me, tell me, if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then, what? 